Well, for more on the Trump team's next move, we're joined by Jordan Seculo, executive director at the American Center for Law and Justice and a member of President Trump's legal team. Jordan, it's great to see you here. First, we'll just start off right away Thanks with so your with your reaction to the Supreme Court's decision on that Texas lawsuit. How much of a blow was this decision to the Trump legal challenges? Well, I think it was very unfortunate that we did not get to at least hear the court's full opinion on the matter, whether or not they were going to have oral arguments or not. But instead of just this one line of they didn't find jurisdictional issues between one state challenging another state's elections, even when they have a state alleging that that other state uh, violated con the U.S. Constitution and thus was disenfranchising uh, their voters, the voters in Texas. And you had all these states that got involved on both sides. So I think I think it was a little unfortunate, uh, to say the least, that we didn't hear more from the court on at least their reasoning. Because I guess as it stands today, a state doesn't have standing uh, to bring a challenge of original jurisdiction to the Supreme Court under this current makeup of the court uh, to challenge how an election, especially presidential, where all the states are voting, uh, was run in another state, even if it was uh, alleged that there were constitution U.S. constitutional violations. So that, that to me, was what was, uh, I think, kind of um, most upsetting is that the court kind of handled it in that, that one-pager uh, uh, kind of uh, analysis uh, or lack of analysis. And, uh, and again, this it was a major case. There were all the electoral uh, uh, college votes necessary at stake to change the outcome of the election. So now you're starting to hear about these other constitutional options, as well as some, some cases that are still moving through state court. Yeah, as you mentioned, um, there are still a few other cases that we're following and watching out for. But, you know, those Trump supporters, they were really holding out hope for the Supreme Court decision from Texas. Uh, let's look ahead to those state courses that are still pending, uh, potentially those in Michigan and Wisconsin as well. How closely is the campaign following litigation in those states? And can you tell us more about what we could expect from those cases? Well, I think the Wisconsin Supreme Court, you'll, you'll hear probably a decision from them before noon today. That's when their electors uh, would vote in the state. Uh, so I, I would expect the Wisconsin Supreme Court to weigh in. If they don't, they're kind of uh, bypassing their opportunity, if you will, uh, to uh, stop the certification and to, uh, again, allow those electors to vote. So they had the hearing on Saturday. I expect that decision by noon Eastern time uh, today or sometime before that, because that's when the electors would go to vote in Wisconsin. That is, of course, one watching very closely. It's a, you know, it's about a, over 200,000 uh, votes. Now, in the, the cases out of Michigan, where these individuals have brought uh, lawsuits, sometimes not connected to the campaign. Of course, we're all watching them very closely. There's also still litigation out of uh, Georgia. And as uh, uh, Mayor Giuliani has said, uh, there could be uh, additional litigation as well uh, in this time period between uh, today and uh, January 20th, obviously, when the next uh, president uh, takes the oath of office. So, so this fight, I, I want to make clear to everybody, uh, continues. It continues legally. Uh, it also continues, and I think especially as you played earlier, right before I was on, uh, the other options available, these constitutional options available. One thing I will say about the Supreme Court decision is that I, I think there may have been this thought process by the court, and I'm just guessing here, but I could see where they, even a conservative justice would say, you know what, these state legislatures uh, could have handled this. Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, they're all co controlled by Republicans. They could have handled this without us telling them what they did was wrong. And they haven't stepped up and done that. They still have time to do it. The clock is running out. And then you have to look at the U.S. Congress and their ability, of course, to take action. It's been pointed out, Democrats tried to do this to President Trump uh, when he was elected uh, back in 2016. Hmm. So as you say, I mean, we're watching that January 6th meeting with Congress. And then, of course, the, today, the key day when electors cast their votes. But we want to play you a moment from the Wisconsin hearing that you mentioned over the weekend. Two judges on the court making the case that if the president had an issue with any of the election rules in Wisconsin, he should have brought them forward earlier. Watch this. Attorney Troopers, we left off with Democracy in the Park, what Justice Siegler had asked about. So that the event was announced four weeks before the first Democracy in the Park took place. Did the president um, file an injunction to prevent that event from happening because it was going to be an unlawful voting procedure that you're alleging now? No. 
he just chooses to challenge it now after he lost the election, correct? I don't think it was a, a conscious choice to not do it before or not do it after. One illegal voter, one person who engaged in fraud at Democracy in the Park. I mean, isn't it true that the reason that your client, Donald Trump, did not file this action until after the elections because it wouldn't make any sense to do it if he had won? But now afterwards, he wants to go back and complain about things that he could have complained about two weeks before the election, such as Democracy in the Park. Jordan, your thoughts on the timeline here, of course, of everything being filed and then what the judges just said in that video clip. It's been very frustrating, of course, because we've heard this time and time again on the Trump legal team. Why didn't you file earlier? Well, in many cases, the, the campaign did file earlier and they were told, we have to wait. You have to wait to see if this, what you're alleging actually happens. And then when we went into court after, after it happened, we were told, well, you're filing too late because it's already happened. And I think that's the exact line of question there. And you saw these two Wisconsin Supreme Court justices focus in on one of the small allegations in this much larger lawsuit, over 200,000 plus votes, like in Wisconsin, where the main issue was not the democracy in park and the, the one instance of fraud, but was the fact that you've got nearly 200,000 people who sent in absentee ballots but never requested them. There's no record of them requesting them, and that's a requirement under Wisconsin state law. I mean, this case wouldn't have gotten to the Wisconsin Supreme Court. The other cases wouldn't have uh, uh, the states joined at the U.S. Supreme Court and require briefing as they did in Texas if there weren't some issues that that were that are that were should be looked at. And so again, I think this idea of should have done it earlier came to us too late. Uh, that is just a way of the, the, the judges or justices in that matter in Wisconsin uh, trying to uh, work around actually dealing with the problem. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, you'll keep us updated, of course, as to how yep. all these cases play out. And we're watching those electors today as they cast their votes. Jordan Seculo joining us live on the program. Jordan, thanks so much. Thank you.